Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omar and today I will react to the top 10 tribute songs to members of the band. This is still, I think, you know, it's still part of the Freddie Mercury thing that I'm doing because, you know, the, the, the first two videos that I did, or no, the first one was Workout, then I did Michael Jackson twice, then I did Freddie Mercury once, and I kind of technically, I'm still doing Freddie Mercury technically in this video, so, um, you know, that, um, yeah, I want to say something, but let's go better. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, you know what I'm thinking uh, right now. So there you go. Um, no, no, no. But this is still kind of a tribute to Freddie Mercury because he's the thumbnail, I guess. So two Michael Jacksons and two Freddie Mercury videos. That's pretty sweet, I think. You know, my fans like that too. So there you go. Everyone's happy. Um, you know, what's the thing? Uh, yeah, so this is basically like a tribute, tribute songs to members of the band. You know, the title kind of says it all, really. Um, you know, the Queen made a fucking album dedicated to Freddie Mercury, Made in Heaven, so I don't know what song they're gonna pick, maybe the title track, or maybe Too Much Love Will Kill You, every time, that's a great song, I don't really know what they're gonna pick from Queen though, I don't know, but it has to be from Made in Heaven, of course, because that was the tribute song, oh no, no, I believe it was a Brian May solo song, I think, I don't know, I can't really think about any other songs, I don't really concentrate on tribute songs per se. But I, can, I, I do think that they, they there are beautiful tribute songs, because you know, it's well intended, it's written with a heart because you know, you want a tribute to like a member. So it always has a heart in there, so that is always something, but you know, it kind of depends what the quality is, you know, it kind of depends with the band, so there you go. Um, there you go. It's quite a long video though, damn. So 40 minutes long. There we go. Oh, back in black, fuck yes. I was like, wait, how is this eligible? But of course a tribute to Bon Scott. You know, he is, uh, you know, he blacked out to say it like that. He, he drank too much, back in black, there you go. You get it. No one but you, only the good Dayong, exactly. It is true though. Only the best dial. And today we're coming down our pegs for the top Or the blue for that matter. A7X. Not a very good song, but uh, you know what I'm saying. What I was saying uh, at the beginning. It is written with a heart, you know. There's heart in it. There's passion behind the track. I can appreciate that, but I really don't care for this band to be honest. I really don't care for So Far Away. That fucking, that fuck all vocal, uh, whenever he's like, sing screaming the core, I fucking hate that, but it's well intended, I'm not gonna shit on it, you know, it's intended for the ref, he passed away, I re you know, I respect them paying tribute, but I'm not a fan of the song, Cliff Burton, fuck yes, what is, what is a tribute song to Cliff though, that was from the belt all, but the Beatles, what, what, what the fuck is this? Oh no. It's not even a fucking Puff Daddy song, it's fucking pretty, man. Like, I'm not a fan of Puff Daddy, like he's one of the richest rappers of all time because he, he is really fucking smart. I mean, if Watch Mojo didn't tell me that, I wouldn't fucking know that. Because I just thought he's riding the coattails of Biggie and then he died and then he just invested in that or something and he got rich. And I didn't think he, he was like the most, most, uh, the richest rapper ever. I didn't know that. And his rapping is fucking awful. So fuck with daddy. Uh, but he's rich as hell though. So he doesn't, he doesn't care. Oh, this is, um, how, oh, I was like, is this that Kendrick Lamar song, uh, Vibe or something. I forgot the title. That's actually what, uh, Please Don't Kill My Vibe, I think. Don't kill my vibe. That's a, that's actually a really good song, Kendrick Lamar. No, none of these shit in general. Because if I say that, I got crucified by everyone on there. So I'm not gonna say he's shit. Kendrick Lamar isn't really my thing, to be honest. I do like him, but you know, he, you know, he's great. I guess you know, for people, not for me per se. I do like some of his songs, but I'm not a huge fan of Kendrick's. If he's gonna make this list, 
maybe uh, I don't even know because they were at a funeral not so long so maybe but uh, X Y X Slipknot and they're talking about Paul Gray right there who was the basis of the band. X I X nineteen Slipknot. I don't know what the title means, but I mean the tone is appropriate though for what for what they're going for. But I mean I'm not a huge fan of false metal bands. I'm still going with that. Yeah, fuck it. Uh, I mean, yeah, false metal is not really metal. Slipknot is more of a hardcore band, I think. But most people call them metal. I guess new metal is not really metal in my opinion. But you know, that's kind of it. That's kind of it, honestly. But I have to say, I'm kind of getting slowly back to Slipknot. Like I, I am a fan in denial. I like their songs, but I won't admit it because it's not really metal. But I think they're. You know, I think they're a good band, but I don't think they're necessarily a metal band. Call me retarded, but they're not a metal archive or a new metal band. New metal's not really metal, so there you go. I know that no one gives a shit about this, but that's just what I think. I do not like how this is sounding. I think my problem with modern Slipknot is, you know, not per se. I actually really, you know, I, uh, well, love, I really like the first two albums and the debut is requested by Don so I'm gonna do that eventually. Uh, I really like Iowa, I'm not a huge fan of Volume 3 because it's like Rick Rubin produced, you know, I don't hate Rick Rubin, you know, it was good on Slayer and Beastie Boys, but don't really care about him on Slipknot or Linkin Park or so, you know, shit like that, I don't really care about that. Um, you know, that was kind of shit to be honest, and Eminem was not really good, so there you go. It was kind of fuck all. It was kind of too loud in my opinion. Um, yeah, I, I don't think he really did a great job on Volume 3 ever, but it does have some of the best Slipknot songs, like uh, Before I Forget, that does a great fucking song. <clears throat> and Duality is pretty good. Um, Vermilion is pretty emotional. <clears throat> and I think they're going with the Vermilion vibe, I think, but... I do like that Vermillion had kind of like a string section and it was acoustic but it was also layered and it was less gritty and kind of shitty sounding than this song does. But that's kind of the point I guess because it's a tribute song to Paul Gray, the, the bassist uh, of Slipknot. And it, it's supposed to sound ugly and dark and bitter and bleak. It's supposed to sound like that because it's, it's a memorial song, it's a tribute. I get that, I respect that, but it's not very good music, I think. But it is, it is, it is a sweet tribute, I guess, but it's not really for me. It kind of sounds like shit to me, uh, to be honest. That whole Grey chapter area. A whole album dedicated to Paul Grey. Oh wait, the title actually makes sense to me now. The Grey chapter, Paul Grey, tribute. It's a whole fucking tribute album, basically. The Devil in I, Grammar Nazi be like. I, I don't mind it as much because it's Slipknot at the end of the day. Do it what you will with a statement, but uh, Crash from The Rock Critic really fucking hates that spelling though. Damn. I don't mind it though because I don't really pay attention to Slipknot. They're not a metal band. They are solid though, but they're not really a metal band. Like probably everyone is gonna like hate me for saying that, but... Not being a metal band is not a bad thing. I think that Slipknot is a good band. You know, I can't really deny them because I do like the song, so... But I, I think they're more of a hardcore band. I don't think they're they're heavy metal, no. New metal, you know, it's not real. You can hear me by now. Uh, where are the chili peppers? Number 9. Knock me down. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, to their former, like one of their former bandmates who was a junkie and shit like that, and he passed away. So I guess what Red Chili Peppers is trying to say is knock me down, knock me down on my high chair, knock me down because I am high, uh, so I don't end up like him. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a nice tribute, I guess. I think that's the meaning of it. That's what I'm assuming right now. Fight like a brave. 
This actually doesn't sound that bad. I still don't like how Anthony Kiedis is acting bad. Oh, that was a Red Chili Peppers video. I didn't even see that. This really annoys me. It's a catchy song. Remember right? This actually sounds really good. Number eight, Australia. Manic Street Fuck yes! I fucking love this band. Oh my I was like, this sounds really good. Damn, let's rewind it for a bit. I fucking love Manic Street Preachers, they're so amazing. Oh yes. Number eight, Australia. Manic Street Preachers. This is definitely gonna be the fucking terminal. I fucking adore this band. Oh my god, they're so good. Listen to that production, listen to that beautiful voice. Let Listen to a uh, fucking motorcycle emptiness or that other song that I really love. Uh, How's that fucking song called again? I haven't listened to it in a while. I forgot the title, but it's fucking amazing. Those songs alone are fucking S tier material right there. I love this band so much. Like they're, uh, what you call them a Britpop band? If they are a Britpop band, they are easily the best fucking band in that genre, you know, close to Blur, I would say. So good. Listen to everything that they're doing right now. That production, that voice, that's everything. I mean, I'm not listening to anything what they're saying. I'm just glad that Manic Street Preachers made it onto the list. To escape from the hardships and personal difficulties associated with the sudden disappearance, desiring to be free from it all in Australia, to them the furthest place possible from home. Oh yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's a good tribute song. Amazing, fucking Manic Street Preachers, man. It's a perfectly executed track that yeah. is highly relatable. I mean, I'm not listening to anything what the song is about. I don't really care. I just love that what Mojo included you guys. I fucking love it, man. Ah, oh, don't, don't mid roll me like that. Like, mid roll me with a shitty band. Don't mid roll me with, with Manic Street Preachers. One of the greatest bands ever, I think. You should definitely check them out, though. They're so good. Oh yeah, yeah, I believe the song was called, yeah, yeah, mid me with Def Leppard, fuck this band. Um, how's it called again? Um, your children won't tolerate this or something? It's a really long, weird title. Um, something with kids and don't tolerate it or something. Um, If you tolerate this, your children will be next. It sounds really long-winded and overdue, but when they sing it, it sounds actually really catchy. So I was like, that title and the thumbnail is really weird, but then I listened to it and I was like, I was in fucking heaven when listening to this song. I'm not kidding around here. It's, they're that good. Listen to them, they're fucking amazing. I love them. Now, now listen to this shitty band. The life of Steve Clark was one for the history books. He was unstoppable on stage and renowned for his incredible ability to run around while playing guitar as fast as lightning strikes. This was until 1991 when Clark tragically passed away at the hands of a prescription drug and alcohol overdose. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've heard about it. I mean, it is a tribute song, but I'm not a Manic Street Preacher, fuck off. Maybe it's more meaningful, but as in quality, don't, don't even. With its untamed use of electric guitars, combined with some 
Oh, I'm just showing off like the places to one more level. Death Leopard for pulling off such an incredible tune less than a year after Clark's death. Oh, I already sent it up to her. What is this? No one but you. Only the good die young. Queen. Is that really a queen song though? Some nice angel imagery right there. Watch Angel Beast. <laughs> I had to I, I have to make a fucking anime reference like in every video or not. I don't think it's that amazing, Angel Beast, but it's I think it's still nice to look at though, so there you go. Angel is an angel, if you know what I mean. But uh, back to Queen, I'm only you know I'm going on about that again. Uh yeah, you know, rest in peace Freddy, we all miss you, rest your soul, uh, you know, F1, I love Queen. Rephrasing the old comments again, everyone does, you know, you, you, you get the point. Um, I'm not sure if this is a Queen song though, but yeah, I believe this was one of the last songs they recorded together. And then they were kind of sketchy on the name, as in, do we really want to name ourselves Queen while Freddy is not in here anymore? You know, he was the, the voice and the face of, the, of Queen, so how, how are you gonna replace him? You can't replace the greatest singer ever. You can't fucking do it. So they ended, of course, and I mean they had a really great run. So I'm, I'm still really happy for Queen. They are really flawless, though. Really, I think that Flash Gordon is kind of shit, but you know that's not really an album. I think it's more of a soundtrack. Yeah, you know, I guess Hot Space is really their only dud, I would say, but it does have a great song on it. So there you go. It's not necessarily a terrible album, but it's really underwhelmed for Queen, you know? The fucking Queen. What else? Queen Drive 3. Queen Drive 3 sold too. There you go. They're, you know, later they're kind of shit. Queen all the way through is fantastic. I mean, Brian May is really trying his hardest. Like, I can definitely like see that he's like putting us all into this track. And Roger Taylor's trying to. John Deacon is just like, yeah, I'm gonna retire in here. I'm gonna take my Queen money. Bye now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, no shit on John Deacon's part, but I mean, this is kind of it, honestly. Like the guy has a wealthy life right now, so definitely happy for all the Queen members. They're so alive. Uh, Number five no. so far away. Avenged Sevenfold. It's so annoying. Not this band per se, but whenever you're trying to like make a big ass burp, but it doesn't come out and it sounds like you're puking and shit. That's one of my most, this is like a big pet peeve of mine. I just want to let it out, big burp, and it just doesn't happen. That's probably like, I'm ruining everyone's appetite at this moment, even my own, but there you go. Um, well, not really. Um, what's the thing? Oh, that face is fucking atrocious. Like, I paused at the moment where a kid was like, with an Iron Maiden shirt on. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely cool in a way, you know? You know, they're um, growing up on like the legends and shit, sure. Uh, I can definitely appreciate the hustle that they're doing here right now, but I mean, right next to Queen, like right above them, no, fuck off. Like, yeah, I get it, it might be more appropriate in a way, it might be a better tribute song for that matter. I, you know, no one would probably say that ever. I, I, Except if you're like a big ass, like hardcore A7X fan, but even then, you're still dissing Queen though. So, we're not percent dissing, but you're still putting them above Queen, which is like, no, that's the bullshit. That's kind of it, honestly. Like, I don't want to shit on this song because it's well intended, it has a heart, like I said, you know, it's a nice tribute to the rap, but I just don't care for the vocals. I mean, the, I don't mind these vocals right there, but whenever you sing screaming the chorus, that is so cringy. But oh, I did it again. 
I mean, it's it's been laid to rest. Don't try to milk his death. Not trying to say they're doing that, but I mean, you're treading old ground. It's kind of what I'm trying to say here. Is that really them? That's like a bunch of kids acting to be A7X. And that's not really a good thing, so there you go. I'm not a huge fan, like, yeah, you know, I have very mixed opinions on A7X. I've, you know, I do like the stage and uh, how's this other album called again? Like your most famous album. Um, si yeah, yeah, City of Evil, I like. I like the self titled one. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it, honestly. You know, I don't really care for the other albums. I don't care for the first two. I don't, uh, I don't really like Hills of the King. Uh, I was really underwhelmed with Nightmare. I do like the song though, but I don't care for the album at all. So I'm, I'm really mixed on this band. I do like the stage a hell of a lot, the last album. So there you go. That was quite progressive in places. So there you go. Eight, nine minute epics and shit. Pretty cool album core. So. Yeah, I'm pretty mixed on this band. <laughs> Fucking hell. I don't hate him anymore, but. I don't know. I do not like that voice at all. Um, yeah, I mean, one of their biggest influences, Metallica, right after. Um, I mean, I fuck, I fuck both heavy more. How am I gonna say this? I fuck heavy weight. How the fuck am I gonna say this? Um, I fuck w way more heavy with Metallica than I do with both Queen and A7X. It's kind of disgusting to say them in the same sentence, but uh, but you know I do fuck with Metallica the most out of the three. So there you go. Guess the one that I do the least. Hmm, that's pretty hard. Number four, to live is to die, Metallica. I mean. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with and Justice Frost still gave it a 10. I still think it is a fantastic metal album, but the songs go on and on and on forever. And where them bass at, boy? Yeah, I, I, you know, there no being bass, there uh, not being bass on uh, and Justice Frost. It's appropriate because they're trying to say Cliff isn't here anymore. That's I think that's why there's no bass on there, because they're doing a tribute to Cliff. There's no bass on the album because Cliff is dead. I think that is that was their point of and just as not having bass. I think that's the point, but I might be wrong, but uh, that's kind of it honestly. Um, I love Jason, I love check out Flotsam and Jetsam, amazing band, love that band. Uh, but you know, that's Kind of it, honestly. Uh, this is still a really fucking amazing album, though. But you know, uh, justice for justice for Jason. Try to say that ten times. Fucking hell. Justice for Jason. There you go. As demonstrated here, this track begins with an easy listening bot, gradually morphing into their classic metal sound. In my darkest hour. Yeah, oh, that's a good one too. But yeah, um, they tribute Cliff, of course, too. But ooh, which one do I like more? Ooh, that's kind of hard. Do I like to live is to die more, or in my darkest? Yeah, yeah, I do kind of prefer in my darkest hour to be honest. But um, you know, it's I think that to live is like a little bit too long for my taste, and it's an instrumental, so you can't. Yeah, I get it. It's an instrumental tribute to Cliff. Like, the instruments... That's sweet. That's really sweet. Like, uh, the instruments speak for Cliff. Because that was his favorite thing to do, to play bass, to play the instrumentals. That's a really great tribute. Uh, you know, I love Metallica. Everyone does, almost. Or, well, they're quite hated, but I do still love them. Um, but, you know... Um, Megadeth had lyrics and they were pretty fucking dark and pretty right on the fucking nose. So I do prefer the Megadeth song, but if someone says they prefer to live to die over in my darkest hour, you know, you're both very good though. They're they're both great tracks, so you're not uh, you know, you're good either way. This 
track uses elements taken from Burton himself, featuring the title as a quote he was commonly known to use. Alongside previously unheard riffs, he himself had written before his untimely passing. Oh, I'm gonna turn on the volume for a bit. Oh yeah, of course. Just when I get into the song, just whenever you, you, you let me hear that amazing riff, you're gonna skip to John Lennon, of course. I don't hate John Lennon, you know, I love him in the Beatles, but John Lennon solo, like no. John Lennon and so Oh George Harrison? What the fuck? Oh a tribute to jo oh a tribute to John Lennon. By George Harrison, there you go. All those years ago, George Harrison. Yeah, that's a nice song. That's, that's kind of a questionable vocal, but the death still listen to it. Rocked not only the music industry, but the entire world when he was assassinated on December 8th, 1980. This moving tribute by fellow Beatle George Harrison serves as an appropriate trip down the very nostalgic lane of Beatle mania. It paints a picture of one former bandmate missing another. Reminding all of their unique brotherly bond. Featuring fellow bandmates Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, the tune is unabashedly cheery, while the song's lyrics see Harrison documenting the life and friendship of the former Beatle. Uh, back in black. This is a pretty sweet fucking song. Yeah, it's kind of like the same with the Queen song or with the Queen thing. It's kind of fucking iconic and it kind of speaks for itself, really. I do, I do prefer Hell's Bells though, but this is like the literal direct in your face tribute song. Is Hell's Bells. I mean, the whole Back in Black album is a tribute to uh, Bon Scott. Um, yeah, I think personally that ACDC got so much success with that album because it was very, um, you know, uh, confronting and it was very direct and just in your face. And I think because of that they really uh, hit, hit their stride with that album because they had meaning in their lyrics. Not, not trying to say that they were meaningless back then, but you know, definitely had more layers on Back in Black because they were actually like mourning, like they were mourning uh Bon Scott's death um I mean amazing album covers just black but it's just great back in black HDG um uh, fucking classic logo right there so there you go uh what else uh songs are great lyric lyrics for the most part are pretty good um the only lyric part that I don't like about back in black is like giving the dog a bone or something that song is really raunchy <laughs> So I definitely don't care for that one though, but um, outside of that, it's like rock and roll and noise pollution is like my favorite ACDC song, Hell's Bells, uh, Back in Black of course, um, Shoot the Trill, all amazing songs, so I still stand, spoiler alert, I still stand with my 10 out of 10 rating um, that I gave Back in Black, so there you go, I still love it. Melissa, the Almond Brothers Band, it kind of looks like Jack Wall in a way. Above and beyond, Deep Purple. Wait, who passed away? Did someone, pa did, did someone on Deep Purple pass away recently? Or six years ago, but still this decade, I suppose. Uh, Winter Bayside. I mean, I, I do, like, I was talking about filtering myself in like one or two videos ago, but I do really have to filter myself right now because I can't really shit talk tribute songs. Because they're all well intended and with a written with a heart, so there you go. 
but it does sound really good. Uh, Alicia by New Order. Kind of a shitty album cover, but sure. I do like New Order though. Uh, number one. I can't even skip it anymore. Oh, Shine on You Crazy Diamonds. Oh, yes. Number one. Shine on You Crazy Diamonds. Pink Floyd. Oh, that is the ultimate, man. That is the pen ultimate. That is one of the most satisfying number one spots ever. Damn. That is a number one spot right there. Fuck Survivor. This is a number one big rider. So good. He wanted to record it, but he was fucked in the. He was too fucked to do it. He was too fucked up by drugs and shit. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it's a subtle, it's a subtle uh, tribute because they're not referencing his name because that's kind of too blunt, I think. But Pink Floyd did it per with saxophones and meaning and layers and keyboards and just everything that makes Pink Floyd amazing. They just did it perfect, man. Oh, I'm so happy with the number one spot. I always want to put it at number one. Yeah, fuck off, John Lennon. Oh, have a marker in your face. Fuck off. Um, I'm really satisfied with the number one spot, though. Fucking hell. I, don't, I, I can't even show my gratitude towards the number one spot. Well done, much mojo, but I can't show any more because I don't have any, any time anymore. Like on the Fukata channel, for videos like my let me Fucking hell. Let me know what you thought about the list. I fucking love the number one spot. Rest in peace, Sid Barrett, you fucking junkie. Uh, peace.